So Fordham here with 4.34 to go in the fourth. They have all three of their timeouts, as do the Owls. Temple 29, Fordham 23. Jim Cooper into the ball, and it's going to be caught here at the 10 by Solano. He rushes to the near side, cuts through to the 25, and he's brought down by the ankles at the 28-yard line, and that's where Fordham has to begin to write their destiny. Fourth down and two from the 49 of Temple. 2.07 to go, fourth quarter. Rams trail by six. Niebrick in the gun, takes. He's going to run up the middle. He dives for the first down. Is he there? It depends on the spot. It's close. They're probably going to need to measure this. And they're going to measure it. Wow. The tip of the ball is going to be mighty close. Here we go. Stretching it out. Oh, it's close. First down, Fordham. Wow. By half of the football. Oh, boy. Fourth and six. Game on the line. 114 to go. Fourth quarter. Ball at the 43 of Temple. Play clock down to 13. Three receivers set. Tight end right side. Dan Light. Back to throw. Niebrick with time. Steps up. He runs. 45-40. Gets down to the 38-yard line. He's close. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he is close. Oh, it, it is absolutely close. And they're going to measure. First down, Fordham, it looks like got it, it is. You got it. By half of a football. How about that? Niebrick checks the sideline, takes, drops back with time, evades the rush, runs up the near side, looks. He's going to throw it deep in for a show of cut. Touchdown. Four seconds left, Ajawa over his head for the score. The Rams for the lead. Snap back, ball down, kick is up, it is good. Fordham 30, Temple 29 with four seconds to go in the fourth. Connor Riley trying to get those arms loose. He'll be in the shotgun, first and 10 from his own 25. Four receiver set and a tight end making a running back in the game. Back to throw. He looks. He's looking left side. Plenty of time. Now DeAndre Slate coming after him in the backfield. Now he rushes to the near side. Under pressure. Sacked. Game over. Fordham has defined the moment and shocked Temple 30-29. Monday Night Quarterback, a presentation of WFUV Sports and FordhamSports.com. We welcome you to the Fordham football locker room here on the Rose Hill campus of Fordham University. And Mac Rosenberg, Coach Joe Moore, had to join me in just a moment. We'll also have assistant coach Nate Stutsky on, as well as Mike Miranda and Michael Niebrick, a couple of the players that really played well in Fordham's 30-29 win over Temple. And as we turn for the first time this week to Joe Moore, had a really classic win, a 30-29 win. You've been interviewing with different uh, media outlets all week so far. What, what does it feel like for you to get a win like that over Temple? It feels great. I mean, it was a tremendous day for uh, Fordham University football, and I couldn't be you know, more proud of our players and our coaches, and, you know, they put their hearts and soul into it and, you know, gave great effort and it came down to the last play and, you know, found a way to, found a way to win. And, um, you know, it's second week in a row the kids have made history, and, you know, hopefully we can uh, continue to play the way we are for the rest of the season. Coach, let's dive right into it here. Offensively, through the first three games, I mean, you guys have rarely turned the ball over. That's been, ball security has been huge for you guys. Can you talk specifically about Michael Niebrick and, you know, the way he's developed in these first three games? Yeah, he's, he's done an excellent job creating explosive plays while limiting turnovers. If I'm not mistaken, I believe we're first in the Patriot League and one of the top three or five in the country in turnover margin. And, uh, you know, those are the deciding factors in games. Uh, Scoring offense, scoring defense, turnover margin, and explosive plays. So if we can continue to generate them offensively, limit them defensively, and you know take care of the football and get takeaways like we did against Villanova and, and Temple, uh, uh, it, it'll um, you know, bode well for the rest of the season. Coach, let's go back to the start of this ball game, and we begin with this first drive of the game. You get the ball down to the one yard line, and you're stopped on fourth and goal. Bring me back to that play call, what you were thinking about and, and how maybe being aggressive in that situation maybe pumped your team up going down the line or maybe it was a little deflating to start the game. Uh, it was a little bit of both. I mean, it was deflating because we didn't get in. But, um, you know, in the locker room before the game, we told the kids offensively, defensively, and special teams-wise that we weren't coming up here for a moral victory and we weren't coming up here to keep it close. We were coming up to win the game and we were going to call it aggressively. And, uh, you know, there was no hesitation. Everyone wanted to go for it. We called a play that was 
you know, suited for the field position that we were on. And, uh, you know, we came up on the short end there, but, you know, some of the other gambles paid off throughout the game. And what we talked about during the game, Mike, I mean, the, the, the mistakes that Temple was making, they were turning the ball over. The mistakes that, that you guys were making, they were really penalties on the offensive line, correctable mistakes in games. I mean, you don't give the ball away on a, on a holding call. You still get a chance to, to rebound from it. Uh, you know, can you talk about the way the team was able to rebound from those uh, types of calls there offensively? Yeah, there were a few penalties that did, uh, you know, knock us out of scoring position or put us behind the sticks. And, you know, it's just, it's a lot easier to convert third downs when you're in a, you know, six or less situation as opposed to a, se uh, a seven or more when, uh, you know, the defensive can, you know, kind of get the rush going and, and really make it hard on the other line to protect and the quarterback to, to get his feet under him and throw the ball down the field. So as, as much as we can have gains of five or more on first down and, you know, not have tackles for loss on, on second down and, and keep ahead of the sticks, it, it'll, it makes us a lot. And we've been good. Our third down conversion percentage has been very good this year. So I think a lot of that is attributed to ha keeping it in a manageable down and distance. Absolutely. And coach, as we look back to this ball game, obviously a couple of Patriot League uh, honors that have been bestowed on your team this week. Stephen Hodge, Defensive Player of the Week. Mike Niebrick is the Offensive Player of the Week in the Patriot League. Mike Miranda is Special Teams Player of the Week. Talk about the performances that they put out in this ball game, and even the guys who did maybe get honored, guys like DeAndre Slate who finished with three sacks. The individual performances this week were very impressive, weren't they? It was great to have a clean sweep of the, clean sweep of the Patriot League awards. You know, obviously Michael played a great game, and uh, Stephen on defense, and, and Michael Miranda on special teams. And those guys were all were also were very well deserved of the honors they received. Um, but it could have been given to a, a, a number of guys offensively: Sam Ajala, Brian Wetzel, you know, Carlton Kuntz, our offensive line. You know, defensively, there are a bunch of guys like you said, DeAndre Slate that stood out, and um, you know, it was a total team effort. It took all three phases to, to play up and beat a team of Temple's caliber. So um, I think that the fact that we, you know had three people receive the awards from the Patriot League and were recognized and had a bunch of others that could have been. And that's probably you know, part of the reason why we won the game. And it was a great team effort. And, and Coach, I want to talk about the, the second half now. Before the game, you pretty much told us you were preparing for Clinton Granger and you, know, you, were, you, know, you, you were ready defensively for wh whatever he may bring to the table. He was awful in the first half. I mean, he, he, we and Mike were talking about, he just he couldn't throw the ball effectively. That was his problem. So they decided to go to the true freshman to start the second half. How much did that surprise you? Because there really wasn't a whole lot of talk about him. There would be talk maybe about Riley possibly coming into the game if Granger could not perform well, but then you get the true freshman at halftime. Yeah, we just had to react to what we saw. You know, uh, Granger was out there in the first half, did some good things running the ball, had some, a couple of nice completions. I know we did get the one interception, and then they, right. they, they decided to make the change at half and go with the, go with the young kid. And, you know, very talented, true freshman. And it's difficult under those circumstances to play, you know, any position as a true freshman, but particularly so at the quarterback position. So, um, you know, Coach decided to make that move and uh, kept him in for a couple of series, and then they went with Rowley. So we just, you know, we couldn't control who was in there. We just had to defend, defend, the, defend who they were playing. And then how much of a difference then was it when Riley comes in and just kind of takes the offense by the reins and he's throwing very effectively, kind of zipping it, zipping it in there in the pocket, and then he's able to, you know, beat you with his legs as well. That, that must have been tough. No, I think it was, it, it was a huge difference in, in – um, how they were moving the ball and scoring points offensively, and I think you could see why they had made the initial decision to uh, name Riley the starter. And he, he had, I mean, you watched the film against Notre Dame in Houston. He, he has a very strong arm. You know, he's accurate. And, um, you know, we had a difficult time to defend in their offense when, when he was in there executing their scheme. So he's a very good football player. And, you know, we just, you know, we happened to have one more play in us at the end of the game than they did. Coach, let's go ahead and go down to that final drive. Obviously, a nerve-wracking drive. First off, before we get to the highlights, let's talk about challenges because there were six in this game. Have you ever seen this many challenges in, in one game? Yeah, it happens. I mean, it, it, at that level, when, when you're in an FBS game, you know, every play is reviewed, and if it's close, they're going to go to the booth, and then the coach has an opportunity to, to challenge. And, you know, <laughs> the unfortunate part for us it was there were a lot of close plays. So, I mean, that's just the nature of it. And, you know, fortunately, on that drive, we came out on the, the positive end of all three. So, Coach, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights. Let's begin with a fourth down play that comes here late in the ball game. Let's get your thoughts on this. Okay. Okay, this is the third down here. Uh, we call it a drop back pass. Uh, they're in man to man coverage. And we're trying to run a cross route, see if we can get a pick, and then run a dig with Sam Ajala. You know, Michael took a drop. You know, took his hitches, didn't see anything open, and you know, kind of does what he does. 
You know, you know, his first two or three reads aren't open. Just tuck the ball and run and get the first down. He did a good job finding the lane, you know, sticking his head down and, and getting the first down by about <laughs> a couple, couple, two, three inches. So it was a good decision. And I want to get your thoughts on, on really both of those two fourth down plays in that final drive. Because, I mean, upstairs we were just – we were ready to jump out of the <laughs> booth, I think, because it was just so nerve-wracking. How, how was it for you on no, the sideline? it line? was very nerve-wracking. I mean, at that point it was it – was, you know, you either got it and the game was over because if you punted, there, there wasn't going to be enough time to get the ball back. And yeah. if you didn't get it, they were going to take the knee. So it was either get the first down or, you know, go home with the, with the loss. So, you know, both of them were by a very small margin. And, you know, fortunately, you know, you know Michael made a play. And, Coach, before we get to the other highlight, looking back at that, obviously uh, I've seen your play call sheet. You've got calls for third and long, third and short. What, how many play calls do you plan for fourth down? Because certainly – there may be more fourth down uh, attempts the, this week than a normal week. There's generally um, around five or six third, five or six third and short plays, five or six third and medium, five or six third and long, and then there's one play on there for fourth down. So, um, you know, the, the fourth end medium play that we ran was on the sheet. The, the, the one that Michael got on the last one was just something that we, we didn't go to the sheet and we ran based on what they were, uh, you know, showing us throughout the game. So, obviously, you have those things on the sheet, but – you know, based on what they do or don't do, you know, you just kind of go with the play that you, know, you feel is going to work in that situation. Right. And let's take a look at the uh, the play that everybody's talking about, obviously, the game-winning touchdown. And I think the thing about this play for me, and I heard a lot of people talking about is is the ability of, of Michael Niebrick here to, to extend the play, to not give up on the play, uh, you know, once once things start to break down for him. What did you think about, about that? Yeah, no, we're at the 29-yard line. I believe there was 13 seconds left before the ball <laughs> was snapped. And, and quite honestly, you know, I probably, not probably, I should have utilized a timeout since we had two, right. a play or two earlier. So, We've been um, saying that, yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I, I, I should have. Unfortunately, it worked out on the back end. Yeah. But, you know, we, we needed to get one into the end zone there. We called a four vertical scheme, and, um, you know, Michael slid out of the pocket. We have our scramble rules, and, you know, he saw Brian open the end zone and threw it down there, and Sam jumped up and grabbed it. And, um, you know, that's part of the thing that, that Michael does well, that, you know, he can play within the construct of the offense and where things are there, take what the defense gives him, and, uh, you know, and then create plays with his feet and make plays, you know, that aren't necessarily scripted against the scheme. So, uh, you know, the other line did a great job protecting. He did a, did a great job, you know, sliding out of the pocket and extending the play and, you know, gave Sam, Sam a chance to make it. And, so. and, you know, at least from our view, it, it looked like, to me, Wetzel was going to be the guy on that play. And then it seemed like almost at the last second, Sam just kind of comes up. Were you cringing when that uh, ball's in the air? <laughs> from, from my view, I actually thought the same thing. Where yeah. I was standing kind of directly looking up the sideline. So Wetzel's kind of I thought Wetzel was right, open. Was right in the back the of the end zone there, and yeah. Sam just kind of jumped up out of nowhere and made the play. It, it surprised me as well in a good way. <laughs> Mike Miranda obviously has to come on in that situation. Perfect from field goals this year, perfect from extra points, but you don't script trying to kick the extra point for the win in that situation. Uh, talk about the poise that he needs to have in order to, to finish that off and get a good kick, especially because Temple looked like they, they had a good opportunity there to try and block that. Yeah, that's part of the job description of being a <laughs> kicker. And, uh, you know, every kick is a pressure kick, and Michael's done a great job preparing himself throughout the summer and during camp. He was, you know, hampered a little bit with an injury during camp, but came back strong. And, you know, you know the burning question – throughout camp and heading into the season was how, how are we going to replace Patrick Murray and Michael's done a fabulous job and you know he um, you know made a bunch of key kicks in key situations particularly the extra point and you know uh, hopefully he continue to stick to consistent throughout the season. And, and you know, I think I heard you say at, at halftime you were surprised at the mentality of the team you know you know, up on an FBS school, and they were they were very composed. They weren't you know jumping all over the locker room. Yeah. And then you know, what, you know, what were your thoughts on the way they came out kind of right away in the second half there? Yeah, I was I was surprised in a good way. You know, there there was plenty of reason them for to be there was plenty of reason for the guys to be excited in the locker room and pumped up, and you know, obviously having a lead on an FBS opponent. But I think that's a, a sign of maturity, a sign of a team that knows what it takes to win and is confident in their abilities and. You know, it was very businesslike. We came in, we made the corrections, we brought it up, and you know, told them it was you know 30 more minutes, you know, to, to make history. And, mm -hmm. and uh, to their credit, they, they did a great job. Well, coach, we'll continue to talk about the history that you're making here and Columbia, the Liberty Cup coming up next week, as well as a look into the national polls coming up later on in the show. But first, we go X's and O's with Nate Slutsky, the cornerbacks coach, as well as special teams coordinator here for the Fordham Rams. Coach, thanks for stopping by. 
Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Glad to have you on here for this second week of Monday Night Quarterback. And Coach, let's go right into this game here against Temple. Really, the, the entire secondary, I, I think, played very well, especially in the first half, taking advantage of a young quarterback. What did you guys see on film that you were looking for a, as a defense? Well, you know, they did some interesting things in the run game that forced us to change some of our coverages up a little bit to be ready for some third phase in, in the run game where they were running tight ends out on slam patterns. and. You know, well, honestly, they, they were very simple from a route progression standpoint. They, they kind of ran a few plays very, very often, so we got a lot of work at it all week, and, and uh, we were able to take advantage of them sometimes, you know, and get in front of some balls. Now, specifically, Coach, in the second half when, you know, they bring in the, the, the second quarterback of that half, they finally bring back Riley, who started the first two games, and uh, he, he's just been zipping the ball all over the place, especially those final two drives offensively that they had. You know, what, what was David Blackwell telling the defense? What were you telling uh, the guys in the secondary there? You know, just trying to keep our composure. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, they, they, they went fast and yeah. they, they, got, they got that ball going. And he, he was more efficient running the offense for sure and getting that thing moving quickly and, and getting everyone else. I mean, really when he came into the game, everyone on their offense played better. Their right. line played better. Their running back played better. And he just, he had that energy. And, and I think they started to wake up and believe that they needed to be back in the game. So, you know, we just... You know, we, we were trying to, you know, get our guys to understand that, you know, 10 out of the 11 guys out there were the same 10 guys that we were playing in the first half and, and uh, doing a great job against. We had to get back into that mode. You ever see three quarterbacks come into a game and none of them get injured? That's the, <laughs> had nothing to do with injuries. No, you know, not that I can remember, <laughs> you know. So um, that might be a first, but, but uh, you know, obviously the, the original starter who didn't play until the second half against us, he was out originally because of an injury. Right. You know, but... Uh, I guess they felt like, you know, he was the guy that gave him the best chance to win, you know, after the first two really struggled, so. Sure. Now, Coach, let's take a look at, at a week in the life of Coach Slutsky here, because for you, playing not only the special team side of the ball, but the defense as a coach, how much time are you spending in terms of film for defense? How much time are you spending with the special teams? And, and what are you doing in practice on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I think uh, from a timing standpoint, I'm basically doing the same stuff defensively just about that I, you know, done in the past. I've you know, we have some great student assistants, you know, that, that really do a great job in, in helping me uh, be able to get both jobs done. And uh, now, you know, the special team stuff comes out of sleep time, so that's where that comes from. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just try to take advantage of, you know, those late hours, 9, 10 at night, you know, and, and uh, get ready for practice the next day and, and uh, get that special team stuff going. And honestly, we've got a lot of assistant coaches here that do a great job, you know, playing their role on the special teams. and coach up each individual position on each unit. And let's talk about the highlights now. And uh, one of the big ones in the first half was uh, the interception by LeVon Williams. And he's a guy who, especially in that first game against URI when Ian Williams was out, he stepped up big time in the secondary. They were having a lot of trouble throwing the ball in the first half. I'm sure you <laughs> knew all about that. And you talk about this play here. Sure. Well, you know, they've been running a combination a lot uh, in the two previous games against Notre Dame and Houston. But they're going to run the tight end to the flat and then uh, curl up that wide receiver. And, uh, or sorry, bring, bring the back to the flat, the tight end, you know, was sitting, you know, right over in the middle of the field. Right. And LeVon was told that when that tight end, or when that tight end kind of sat down to the middle of the field, that he could rob that curl. And, you know, they've been running all week, and we've been practicing all week, and, and LeVon saw it and jumped it and, and um, you know, was able to make the play. And that was good for us. I mean, it definitely got the momentum going in that first half. Certainly. Let's take a look at another play that came late in the first half this time. This was a, a field goal, second career long of the game as well, a 47-yarder from Mike Miranda. Uh, take me through this play and, and the decision to, to kick this field goal here. Well, Mike, before the game started, was, was really knocking him through, especially in this direction. I think before the game and going in this direction, I think it was maybe 12 for 12 before the game, and he was knocking him from beyond the 50. You know, so Coach said, you know, we, we, I think we were already maybe on the 30-yard line, and he said, Coach, how many more yards do we need from Mike you know, to get this kick in, I said, we can kick it from here. And uh, I think on that third down play, we're in, we'll get a completion. It's incomplete. Sent Mike out there, and he does what he does best, which is knock field goals in, which he's done all year. Now, w what's the adjustment period been like for him going from not doing anything last year? In his freshman year, he did, he did some stuff. No, nothing last year, and then this year he's the main guy again. What's that kind of back and forth transition been like for him? Well, I mean, he's just, he's 100 times better than he was when he started as a freshman. Right. This is because when when uh, you know we had Patrick last year, he didn't just sit on the sideline and wait for his turn. He got himself better every single day, and and you know when we were relying on him this spring to be the guy, you know he stepped up, and then all you know all camp, you know we brought in some freshman kickers, you know to compete for the starting job, and and he stepped up and he squashed the competition early, and and just made kicks, and he's made kicks all camp long, and we trust that when we put him out there, we're going to get three points. 
Well, and Coach, I want to talk to you now about maybe the, the larger impact of this win. Uh, obviously, every coach does a little bit of recruiting. You've been here for four years now. What does a win like this do for the program that you've kind of seen evolve now over the past few years? Well, I guess we'll see. It's kind of early. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, this is, um, I think for two weeks in a row, I've had the biggest win in my coaching career. So uh, Villanova, I mean, being a top 10 team at home with a great crowd and, you know, with guys that I love, you know, you know, this team, you know, getting it done. And then the next week beating a, you know, team that a lot of people didn't think we had much of a shot to beat except for the people in, you know, our room. You know, I felt like, you know, our team believed going into that game we could win it. So, uh, but, you know, I've been on the phone with some recruits the last couple of days and, you know, I've had co recruits text me and call me and, uh, you know, they, you know, tell me how excited they are. And, you know, so hopefully we can knock down some commits here and, and uh, you know, keep this program going forward. Sounds good, Coach. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Time to go inside the huddle with three Mikes. Mike Watts, Mike Niebrick, Mike Miranda. Guys, thanks for dropping by your own locker room for a few minutes. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Glad to have you guys. And going off this Temple game, let's just start with this. Is this the most thrilling win of your career so far, really, for, for both of you guys? Yeah, it's probably the biggest win I've ever had. Um, I know my junior year in high school, we, we kind of won in a, a state semifinal game, kind of on the same, same type of play. And... Um, you know, thinking back to that play, it really has a lot of good comparisons, but I think overall, um, definitely the biggest one I've ever had. Mike? I never had the opportunity to play in a, in a state championship, so by far this was definitely the uh, most exciting game, most exciting ending that I've been a part of uh, my entire career. Yeah, absolutely. Now, for both of you guys uh, earning some Patriot League honors here over the first couple of weeks of the season, for you, uh, a repeat for you, Patriot League Offensive Player of the Week, what does that mean for you? It means a lot. Um, you know, I just think that how well our offense played really that you know that's why I won the award I know uh, you know there were a lot of other really solid performances out there in the Patriot League for that you know really deserved you know Patriot League offense player of the week honor so um, you know I give it all the credit to my offensive line played absolutely amazing they really stepped up big uh, obviously the skill players you know Sam to Bucky Brian and you know Koontz and, and Dan Light really played well too so um, you know, a lot of the credit goes to them, but, you know, it's, it's a great honor to, to get that again. And Mike, so far, perfect this season, 6 of 6 on field goals, a couple of career longs, which we'll get to in a second, 12 for 12 on extra points. I guess the offense would be 30 points lighter without you. So going into this week, getting special teams player of the week, what does that mean for you, maybe after not playing last year with, with Patrick Murray kicking so well? You know what, it means a lot. Just uh, I go out there just to do my job like everyone else. So. You know, at the game ended with the, uh, with the extra point. I was very confident in myself. Uh, Coach Moorhead puts us in a, all the kickers in a, almost like game ending situations where he brings the whole team in to really like shout at us and, uh, you know, and have like a pressure kick. So, you know, I, I knew I saw his face when uh, we were actually heading out for the, uh, the, the second time out. He, he saw I was very confident, so and I knew he was confident I was going to make the kick. But uh, we were actually more concerned about the, uh, the overruling of the mm -hmm. Sam getting pushed out of bounds. So, you know, just like I said, just uh, I go out there and do my job like everyone else, like Mike did and did Dan Light, Wetzel, everyone that really pushed it for the, uh, for the win. Extra point-wise, there can't be anything close to that pressure-wise. No, not at all. You know what, I mean, there was some pressure, but going out, I was really enjoying the, the, the moment. I said, you know what, listen, this is my job. I do it 100 times a day. We've been perfect so far, knock on wood. So uh, I do what I did all, all the time, and uh, we, uh, we executed. We'll make sure Mike knocks on wood immediately following the conclusion of this yeah. interview. But, uh, Mike, let's start with you. A couple of highlights looking back at uh, the game here for the first half. Uh, we'll begin with you, uh, Mike Miranda, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. We'll get to the game-winning drive in just a sec. Let's begin with a 44-yard field goal for you. Uh, Fordham trying to get on the board here and for you to be able to come away uh, with a career long on this first kick at this FBS stadium. What's it like for you? So right now, Gaul's basically going to the win, uh, coming in uh, before the game started. I was warming up, and uh, going this way was, was actually more difficult than the, uh, than the longer one. Essentially, uh, I was hitting it straight up, and the balls were going left to right. I was maybe 7 for 12 going this way, and uh, you know what? I said to myself, I'm going to put a little more mustard on it. You know, not really going to get too much height, so uh, the wind won't have a uh, really chance to, to put it left or right. So once I told him to go put like a straight hold up, it's more of a kicker thing. I don't really know about kicking, so. Uh, Less than you, but. <laughs> sure. But uh, anyway, just, uh, I really just put a lot onto it. And it was a low kick, which, uh, which kept it from going left to right. And it went through. Just, uh, I was really happy about that. Uh, it succeeded my, uh, my 41 career long my, for my freshman year. So it felt good to walk off that field knowing I made that. So there you go. You finally break that career long. It's been years since you've broken it. And then about two hours later, they, uh, or about an hour later, they ask you to do it again at the end of the first half. 
This one going the opposite direction, 47 yards. Uh, when was the last time uh, you kicked a field goal that long in a game situation? And, and what were you thinking about going into that? Had you practiced from that distance before? I was basically focused in on preseason on the inside of the 40. So 45 and over, I, I kind of really didn't have too much time to really work on. But so far, like, um, I, I've been money. But uh, <laughs> in regards to the, the 47 going the opposite way, we had the win, but I heard Coach Moorhead call over to Coach Dusky and say, listen, uh, are we good from here? And I don't think he, he didn't know I was behind him. And I said, Coach, uh, we're good to go. <laughs> and uh, he said, all right, go, field goal. Then I went out there, and, uh, you know, Wes just looked at me, he said, just do what you do. And I uh, lined up, kicked it through, and uh, really uh, sparked it up for the uh, – the environment in the, in the locker room at halftime. Uh, can you say that was money again for me? <laughs> <laughs> now, Mike, let's go to you. You were money there in the fourth quarter. Let's go to this game-winning drive. Let's look at this first fourth down, uh, a fourth down and short, uh, in this first highlight. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you were looking at as you approached the defense here. Uh, well, actually, we, this is just coming off a timeout, so um, we were kind of going back and forth on what play to call. Um, obviously, we had the, the earlier fourth and fourth and short that we didn't get, so um, going into that play, we really wanted to get the perfect play in, and, um, you know, Coach actually wound up calling a, uh, a straight-up option play, um, speed option, right, reading off the defensive end, which we had maybe run once or twice throughout the week, so we were all a little bit, uh, a little bit concerned when he called that play, but um, once we, we got – we got lined up. We saw the, you know, saw the defense. They were lined up in something that, you know, that we could expose with that particular play. So, um, as I as I took the drop, he kind of had a good angle on the pitch where where CJ was. So I saw a little bit of lane, and I just kind of took it and you know got it by a couple inches. So it was it was it was pretty cool to get that. Yeah, absolutely. And and looking back at it, even in this game, a different front. So in terms of the read option, this was a four down front. Last week, you saw more of a three down front. What difference does that play for you as a quarterback trying to read that? Well, it's not a huge difference. Um, just the way we run, you know, we have so many different reads on who we're reading, um, so many different plays with it. So um, it, it's really nothing different for me. Um, I think the biggest difference this week and, and kind of uh, the Villanova game was they were doing a lot more holding at the line of scrimmage, which was, which was letting CJ kind of get the ball a little bit more. Um, so I think that's the biggest difference week to week is just kind of figuring out if they're going to hold or if they're going to bend hard and, um, you know, I guess Temple really thought that, that they'd rather have CJ beat them, and um, they just kind of held the whole game. Now let's go a little bit further here. Take a look at the next fourth down. A couple of reviews going back and forth. This one was fourth down and six. Uh, take me through this drop back. What were your reads here? Oh, we, I, I, bl I believe it's under. So uh, we have, we have a, a crossing route, a basic behind him, and uh, you know then obviously CJ on the check down. But... Um, basically, once once we lined up, I saw they were man-to-man -man coverage, which as a as a running quarterback, that's that's something you really like to see in, in a drop-back game. If if you if none of your reads are open, you know nobody's looking at you for for if you're going to run the ball or not. So, um, you know, as I was taking my drop, I saw they were really latching on to all the all the crossers. So, um, I saw a little lane. I knew, like I said, they were in cover one, so they weren't looking at me. So I saw a lane to go. I just took it, and uh, you know, again, we got it by you know three or four inches. So. Um, it, was a, it was a pretty big play in that drive. Yeah, now, going through this drive, what's the feeling on the sideline? What's the feeling on the field for the team? And, Mike, you, you, you were on the sideline here for that portion. Yes, I was. What, what are you thinking about as the ball continues to move up the field and time continues to wear down a little bit? As all this was going on, I was kicking into the, uh, into the net. And I was kind of, yeah, in a way, you're not supposed to really pay attention. Just listen. Just focus on your kicks. Get the, the muscle memory in. So I got a few in, but... I was kind of distracted. I was like, oh, I really got to watch this play because they were just, it was so exciting to be there and see what Michael was, uh, was doing for us. So uh, after the first one, I was like, you know what? I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to look. I'm going to keep kicking. And then it happened again. I said, no, 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 I got to look. Yeah. So I ran over the sideline, and uh, I was paying attention to what was going on. We were getting closer to field goal range, so which, I mean, we weren't going to kick a field goal, mm. obviously. But uh, just to pay attention and be a part of the environment and the, uh, and the moment. And Mike did what he did with that, uh, that huge Hail Mary play and went off with the extra point. And so let's take a look at that Hail Mary play, because it's what everybody wants yeah. to talk to you yeah. about right now. Let's take a look. 29-yard line. Had, had you run a play like this before in practice with the pressure and the rollout? Well, we do a lot of um, individual work. You know, we work a lot on stepping up in the pocket. And, uh, you know, this was actually a play where I had to step up that we had worked on a lot throughout the week. Um, so as I saw Fish kind of get 
you know, pushed up field. I knew I had to kind of duck under him. Um, I got I got out of the pocket. My, my first read was actually Danny down the seam, but um, with me having to escape, I knew I couldn't throw it late over the middle of the field. So I just kind of rolled out, tried to buy some time, tried to let the receivers get down into the end zone. Um, I looked up, I saw the clock. I, I believe it was at like nine, 10 seconds. So I knew we had some time. Um, so where I could throw it in the end zone, if it, if it gets batted down, we still have another play. Um, but as I was rolling out, I just see Sam kind of standing at the goal line with his guy latched onto him. And then out of the corner of my eye, I see Brian just kind of running down the end line. Mm -hmm. So I threw it and my intention was, hey, you know, I'll throw it to a, to a spot where either Sam comes down with it or if he, if it's a little too high, Brian will be right behind him. And, um, you know, after I threw it, I actually got pushed down. I hear the, 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 the crowd go crazy. And I was like, oh, geez, it, it was dropped. <laughs> you know, let's, let's try and work on an actual Hail Mary here. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I pick my head up, and all I can see is Sam, you know, holding up the ball. So uh, it was an absolutely incredible feeling, and it was probably the fastest 30 yard sprint I've ever had, you know, running down to, to go beat up Sam in the end zone there. So um, it was a pretty special play, and it was, it was just absolutely incredible to be part of. And Mike, then the pressure all falls on to you. Obviously, team doesn't want to go to overtime, so I spoke earlier with Coach Moore about the poise that it takes, but had you ever gone through a situation like that in your head or in a game, or even in practice where you try and go through, what do you do when you're trying to kick a game winner like this? It, has it ever really crossed your mind that you get that opportunity in a game like this? You know what, if, if I was told before the game like what it would come down to, like the, um, the situation, the three field goals, three extra points, and, and the, uh, which, which included the game winning extra point, you know, I would never believe that. So essentially, I uh, cleared my head. I went out there. I said, listen, I do this 100 times a day. You've been perfect. You know, Sully's unbelievable. Wetz was a great holder. The whole lineup front is, has been, you know, more than I can ask for. So essentially, you know, like I said, cleared my head. And they had a few, uh, few timeouts, which they, they most definitely used them. And the, uh, the somewhat, like, review of the play, which was, yeah. I think, you know, I mean, let's be real. <laughs> but uh, it yeah. wasn't money. Yeah, it, it no, wasn't money. No, not at all. So I went, like I said, Wetzel just uh, before the second uh, timeout, just he looked, pulled me over, and said, "Listen, you're good from here. It's an extra point. Yeah, I can kick it, mm -hmm. which uh, you probably could. Yeah, I don't know if you can see yeah, that. Well, yeah, he's, he's a pretty good kicker. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Hopefully, he doesn't take my spot before the season ends. But, uh, can he kick 47? He kicked 50, but not shoe. Oh, he kicked a 48 yarder and I walked through actually. Uh, <laughs> Friday with, with no shoe. Mike, I would watch out. Yeah, if I, were you. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I think Studs here uh, really <laughs> solidified himself with with the with the kicks on Saturday. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Good so, I, so anyway, I went out there, uh, did what I did, and thank gosh, I uh, went to the uprights. As soon as I saw that, I just started running. I saw <laughs> running away from the guys to uh, tackle me down. So uh, what a great great experience. Great great win for the team. Well, and, and you're running, but I'm sitting in the booth saying, they do realize they have to kick off, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So what's that like? You, you get back uh, into the sideline after thinking you're going to get tackled. I don't know if you actually did or yeah, not. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you do then, having to go out and, and place the ball at the 35 and kick off like it's no big deal or like it's another game? You know what it was? That there was only four seconds left, so I had a feeling we were going to squib it. So essentially, it would have brought the, uh, the defense on the field. So. You know, individually, I guess my job was, was almost done, but I knew my teammates had the ability to, to finish the game. Mm -hmm. So we had one timeout left, and Coach, uh, Coach Lussie put us out there and said, listen, we're going to see how they line up, then we're going to call a timeout, bring you guys back, and then readjust, which mm -hmm. we did. Then he told me, listen, Mike, just put on the 30, 25-yard line with a squib kick. Hopefully they'll drop on it, which they did, and we executed, and DeAndre Slate made that tackle, and, uh, which really concluded the game. Yeah, DeAndre sacks Connor Riley there for the final play of the game. What what's the first thought that runs through your mind other than run and tackle somebody else? I mean, what what do you what are you guys thinking in that moment? Well, I was honestly still kind of in shock. Um, you know, after after Mike had made the kick, everybody was trying to come over and congratulate us, but I just wanted to be left alone. I was like, hey, you know, there's still four seconds left. There's there's a lot that could happen here. So, um, you know, once once Connor got brought down by by DeAndre, it was just a huge, just kind of weight, just kind of got lifted off your shoulders. Um, just an absolutely incredible feeling knowing that, you know, we had come up with that first BCS win in, in, in school history. So um, it, was a, it was just a pretty special feeling that, you know, none of the guys on this team that were part of it will ever forget. All right, Mike, obviously you've done your job. You get the extra point, you get the kickoff, a, a good squib. What, what are you doing on the sideline at that point? You know, like Mike said, I had just had a huge like load off my shoulders. So I forgot who picked me up, but they threw me on their shoulders, and I think it was Tim Donahue, and <laughs> well, he kind of threw me it. up in the air. I, I almost fell down. Admittedly, you're not hard to pick up. No, not <laughs> at all. <laughs> but uh, just what an experience! I, I really—it was so surreal. It took me a few hours to 
to, to hope, you know, to say to myself, I hope I'm not going to wake up one, you know, from this dream. Yeah. Just uh, what, what a great overall win, great experience. Uh, just uh, really sensational. Now, last question for you guys. Who's better, Mike Niebrick, the kicker, or Mike Miranda, the quarterback? Uh, we were actually just sitting there talking about this. With oh, Chris really? Andy, and, uh, you know, I, I, got, I got us down to, to get the points to tie the game, but, you know, ultimately Mike won it for us, so he gets the, the victory. I, I, I think you mentioned well, it was you as a kicker. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was you as a kicker. Uh, if he was better a better kicker, uh, then he would be a quarterback. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll 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 he's better. Yeah, okay. that's, that's uh, here's your chance. chance. Okay, so essentially, like, uh, like Mike said, that when Wetzel gave that kick, mm -hmm. uh, we had five minutes of play time mm -hmm. and after that walkthrough that Moorhead gives us, uh, Coach Moorhead. So uh, Mike lined up a 45-yarder. Mm. It was a straight on kick, straight on old school, and he, drew, and he actually nailed it. I drilled wow. it. I drilled it. Yards, I, so I caught a couple of feet, you know, of distance left. So I tried to put it and put it back to fifty, and uh, it wasn't wasn't a great result. But well, in the fun period, hey, you know, is is Mike Miranda playing at quarterback? Could he go through some reads? He could, I think he could. Yeah. Yeah. See, he's a I mean, serious I, I, athlete. I, he's I he's from have the advantage to look over the line. You never doubt somebody that's from Brooklyn. So. No. No, no. You, you don't. You don't ask the kicker from Brooklyn. Exactly. So I'm from Virginia? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a little yeah, more of a stretch, it's right? It's a little stretch, yeah. Ah, all right. Well, guys, thank you so much for letting me in the huddle this week, and congratulations thank on you. the win. All right, thank you. Time for a look ahead with Fordham football head coach Joe Moorhead. We look forward to the Liberty Cup game. It's going to be on uh, WFUV 90.7 and on the Patriot League Network on FordhamSports.com. And as we turn to you, Coach, here, Columbia, a big rivalry. Obviously, you try to win the rivalry games every year. It's one of the goals that you set. How important is it to keep the momentum going against a Columbia team that really hasn't had a chance to show you anything this year playing in their first game? Yeah, it's, it's vitally important. And first thing is because it's the next game on our schedule. And, um, you know, we can't, can't look back, can't look ahead. And we have to focus on the task at hand. And the task at hand is Columbia this week. And, uh, you know, our, one of our one of our goals every season is to retain the Liberty Cup, and it's a rivalry game against a, a school in close proximity. And um, you know, there's a lot at stake on many levels, so um, it's a huge game for us. So we're going to prepare and treat it as such. And, and what's your message now, coming off of such an emotional, you know, win, such an emotional game? Team obviously still kind of riding the high of that game. How do you now keep them focused and just really, you know, mentally prepare them for this Saturday? Well, we, we've told the kids that, that last week doesn't matter this week. And that um, you know we need to have, we need to focus on the task at hand, and, and we, you know we're really told them we don't want to even discuss the term letdown because let letdown infers that you your preparation, your effort, and your execution is relative to the, to the talent level of the team you're playing. So we need to take care of Fordham and do what we've done the first three weeks, and you know have a great week of practice, give great effort, and execute our scheme better than Columbia, and you know take care of ourselves, and you know, that's really c control the controllable, and that's how well we we practice and we play. Now, Coach, let's look back the last year against Columbia. It was a, a team that was a, a bit of an upstart for, for the Fordham squad. It was at their place, and it really it came down to one play late in the ball game. It was a play where the quarterback ran over the line of scrimmage while delivering what was a game-tying or go-ahead pass there late in the ball game. But, Coach, what do you take away from maybe last year's film and, and the way last year's game played out? It's going to be a, a dogfight. I mean, it, they're uh – you know, they're, they're a very well-coached team. They have a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. And, you know, it came down to the last play last year and, uh, you know, could have easily gone into overtime had the kid not stepped across the line of scrimmage. So we accept, expect much of the same this year. And, um, you know, with it being their, their opener in our, in our, our fourth game, uh, you know, there, there's some uncertainty relative to what their schemes are going to be, particularly on defense because they've got a new defensive coordinator. So, you know, we just got to prepare to, to um, you know, do our best in a rivalry game setting. Coach Fordham football now in the top 25 in FCS uh, for the first time since 2007. I know you talk so much about we control only what we can control. You know, we don't worry about the other stuff. But what does it mean to you, uh, you know, only your second year here at your alma mater to be able to do this? That's great. And it's, it's a reward for the kids for all the hard work and effort and, uh, you know, passion and sacrifice that they put into it. And they've earned it. And, um, you know, it's hard to get there and it's hard to stay there. So all we can control is, is going 1-0 every week so that's that's you know very proud of them they've earned it you know and, and they deserve to be excited about it but um you know we, we've just got to focus on the task at hand to stay there coach just a few more questions for you here sean brackett the quarterback last year graduates this year new quarterback obviously uh, tough to really say what exactly you expect to see out of really both sides of the ball but personnel wise what have you seen so far out of them 
you know, they, they've got a transfer quarterback from Stanford coming in, a kid named Nottingham, who was a very highly ranked kid coming out of high school uh, from California, I believe, originally. And, uh, you know, we're expecting to see him as a starter. And, uh, you know, the, the running back, Marcaris Garrett, had a, had a big day against us last year, over 100 yards. So, you know, they run the ball well. They've got some, you know, skilled guys on the, on the uh, receiving core. And then defensively, Olinger is the linebacker. They've got two very good defensive ends. And Markel Carter is as, as good of a safety defensive back that we'll see the entire year. So, yeah, we're definitely going to have our hands full. And coach, finally, 9-11 Memorial game, the, the Liberty Cup is obviously very difficult for New Yorkers. And you've lived in this area now for a very long time, playing quarterback here in, at Fordham, now coaching here, being up at UConn. You've been in the Northeast. What does this game mean to you beyond just winning a football game? What does this mean to you in the larger scheme of things? Uh, it, it's, it's a great opportunity to commemorate the memory of the victims, you know, particularly you know Kevin Sozik was a teammate of mine here at Fordham and um, Nick Brandon Marty, two Fordham football alumni, and obviously all those who, who lost their lives, you know, in the attacks on the, uh, when, uh, you know, in the Pentagon and in, in the World Trade Center. It, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's bigger than football. So, you know, we have to take our opportunity to honor those who, who have fallen. So that's going to do it for us here in this edition of Monday Night Quarterback. Just four days and 17 hours, 42 minutes. Well, we've got a counter up there. Believe me, we know how long it is till the Columbia sure game. Fair enough. We'll uh, have that game for you on WFUV and WFUVsports.org. That game, of course, is going to start at 1 o'clock, the one-on-one -on -one pregame report at 12.50. So for Coach Joe Morhan, Assistant Coach Nate Slutsky, for Mike Niebrick and Mike Miranda, my co-host Mac Rosenberg, and all of our WFUV and FordhamSports.com crew, thanks for joining us this week, and have a good week, everybody.